Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I have uh, Harun here from uh, webs.com. Hi Harun, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. So as usual, what we're trying to do is for the next 10 minutes get you some inside scoop on their story. It's a phenomenal story. Um, you know, what they've done, how, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and uh, in the future of uh, webs.com. So Harun, why don't you start off with giving us a little bit of background on you know, how you got started. Yeah, um, you know, I always wanted to start a company. I knew that from a young age, um, and did the lemonade stand and the and the lawn mowing businesses and all that stuff as a kid. But um, you know, we we had a lot of people coming. Me and my brother had a lot of people coming to us and saying, "Can you build us websites?" And this was back in the year two thousand around. And um, we wanted to start a company. We were thinking of doing like a web design company, but the problem is it just doesn't scale well because you're manually building all these sites. So we said, "Well, what if we?" you know, created something that created websites. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the stuff out there back then, like GeoCities yeah. and those things, and they were just too difficult to use. The user experience wasn't good. So we came up with a concept, and then um, we started, one day just users started trickling in, and we didn't know where that was coming from. And uh, then my younger brother, who was also working with us, was 14 at the time, confessed that he had put us on DMOZ. And uh, DMOZ, Google was using DMOZ at the time to index and stuff like that. And so that's kind of how we launched. Wow. So, so what were some of the metrics for the first couple of years that you <laughs> So, I mean, you know, we really didn't know what we were doing, right? So what, all we did was we were tracking, for the first sort of initial thing, we were just tracking daily sign-ups. Yeah. And it began with one, it went to three, it went to ten. I remember on my graduation day when I was an undergrad, as soon as we graduated, we just ran to the computer lab and said, like, let's go see how many users. And it was, I think, 32 or something like that. And we were like, this is going to be huge. Like, we're just growing exponentially. Um, and the only way we were growing was we had a link on the bottom of these free sites that said, you know, create your own website at FreeWebs, which is uh, what it began as. Um, so that was the main thing we were tracking. We had no revenue model. We were just trying to grow users. and. Uh, we were doing the technical support, so we would get a lot of feedback, and it was much more important to us to figure out, all right, what's the feedback from the users, what do they like, what do they not like, and we could quickly sort of make changes to the system. So where did the, the initial funding come from? Um, the initial funding uh, came from us. We each put in $1,000, and my brother was coming out of a, a dot-com that um, was sort of failing. And so they had a lot of cheap hardware on sale, as a lot of dot-coms did at that time. And so we were able to get sort of servers and stuff for you know ten cents on the dollar, wow. and so we sort of took that money, and we we put it in, we got a server, we had it in the closet on a DSL connection as as our as our yeah. first server um, as my brother's closet. Yeah. Wow, yeah. awesome! Uh, it reminds you of my days as well. That's, that's cool. That's <laughs> no, the right. cool way to do it. <laughs> so so where are you guys right now in terms of? Numbers, uh, monthly uniques, users. So today we um, we're we're at about thirty million uniques wow. globally. Yeah, um, about congratulations. Close, thank you. Awesome. Um, close to ten. We're very close to breaking ten million in the U.S., yeah. which to me is an, an important mm -hmm. milestone. Um, and our page views are in the hundreds of millions. Yeah. So you know, we, and that's been growing really well. Um, and sort of in that interim, you know, in the years since yeah. since we started there. A lot of the growth was organic, and I think one of the main reasons was the ad model dried up right when we were launching, and so we launched free websites with no ads, and no one was doing that at the time. And then several of our competitors went premium only to survive the dot com crunch, and so I think a lot of people ended up turning to us during those years. So I was in law school from 2002 to 2005 and managing the business on the side, and my brother was working full time and managing on the side. And it wasn't until I graduated in 05 that I actually went full time in business. And then in 2006, we raised $12 million. So, um, so let's talk about monetization. Yeah. Um, you know, it starts off with you, you're not putting any ads, and I'm guessing you, you didn't have the premium versions back then. It was all free. Right. Well, what we did about six months in was um, we said, I wonder if we can sell premium mm -hmm. stuff. And you know, PayPal had come out, and we said. I'm just going to put a PayPal button here that says FTP access. And we didn't even have FTP access. I just wanted to see if people would buy it. And it's, someone bought it. And so we were like, wow, this is like we have a business model. This is amazing. So we started adding some more of these things. Um, so it's FTP and more space, more bandwidth, and things like that. 
And we were literally like manually setting up the people's accounts as they would create it. And then we had a script to do it and we had to run it every day. And if we forgot to run it, then like, you know, the people oh, wouldn't oh, get their oh, oh, subscriptions oh. that day. Um, it was pretty funny. Um, and then, you know, and so we rolled that out. And then it wasn't until Google AdSense came out that we actually brought advertising back into the scene. Mm -hmm. Which is like 04. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell me, tell me about this new feature that you guys are launching, where people who have um, websites can actually pick and choose all the card work features they want. Yeah, so we have our premium packages, which is for the bread and butter. Um, but um, you know, we we also realize that we have a large audience that's never going to pull out a credit card, um, and either they're under eighteen or they're in another country or something like that. And so we thought, look. How can we sort of incentivize them to make us money in some other way and give them something as a result? And you know, we benefit when we give them stuff. We give them extra space; their websites are going to get better. Um, if we give them, you know, whatever features we give them, it's going to be more sticky and all of that. So we launched um, a credit system, and there's a shop with different features that they can add on to their website. Um, and then there's several ways to earn that currency. Um, and you know, one of the primary ways is you know offers and surveys and things. Uh, Peanut Labs was sort of perfectly fits yeah. into that. So again, I have a vested interest here. But yeah. you know, how how's your experience been working with, with you know all the providers? And for like, there are a lot of app developers that, that see this. You know, what what are some recommendations? Watch out. Yeah, um, you know, first thing I did was just talk to a bunch of different people um, about sort of who's kosher and who's not. Um, you know, what you'll hear probably is that in general, it's a shady the offer business is shady yeah. business. I you know. Um, so that's that's just what they say on the street. Um, so we met with all the different providers. Um, we picked to, to work, with, you know, to try out three of them. Um, and and you know the best way to do it really is just to test different providers against each other. So we we run you know uh, the offers. Um, you know we split it a third and we we give a third to each one and then we see which one's happening. Fortunately for you, Peanut Labs is currently in the lead in both positions. Um, you know, it's early; it's only been a couple of weeks. Um, but you know, I, and I think part of that is because um, you guys have more surveys, I think, than other people, and more free offers as opposed to signing up for Blockbuster things like that. And so, when you're trying to monetize a younger audience or people specifically, you know, who don't have credit cards, then perhaps you do better in that way. So we just have a minute left. So there are a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that think we're just starting out their own company, or you know, just in the position that say you were uh, ten years ago or nine years ago. Um, advice on what to do, what not to do, how to survive. Yeah, I mean, I think the hardest part is really starting. Um, so I would just say force yourself to launch something because yeah. once you do that, it just sets off a chain of events, right? And you don't. No one really knows how to do all of these other steps, like raising money and all that stuff. Like I didn't know how to do it. I'm yeah, sure you yeah, didn't know how to yeah. do it. You it, you just force yourself into the position, and so the most important thing to do is launch something, and then have users start forcing you to change your product, and then you know make your company better and better and better. Um, that to me was the most motivational thing, um, and so it's really fortunate that we actually accidentally launched and, yeah. and just got out there. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say, and I would say you know entrepreneurship isn't doesn't have to be a super risky thing. I did it on the side for a while before I went all in, and I think that's also, you know, I think some people have this mentality that you really have to just give your life and heart to it, but I think that turns off some people who could have been great entrepreneurs. So yeah. I said, if you're interested, just go for it. So the last question, really quickly. Yeah, um, sure. So you went to Harvard uh, Law School, right? That's right. Yeah. And when you graduated, there must have been a lot of pressure to, to go and you know, be a lawyer. I mean, you, gra yeah. you graduated from Harvard Law School. Yeah. So like, what was that decision process? With, you know, yeah. where did your family try to convince you to? Yeah, definitely. I had some family who yeah. were saying, "Why aren't yeah. you, you know, becoming a lawyer?" And I had a, I had a job being waiting in front of me that paid a lot. Um, fundamentally, the same problem with the initial problem: being a lawyer doesn't scale. Yeah. So you're doing one case at a time, one case at a time, and you can't scale. I can serve. We've had 25 million websites mm -hmm. created on webs.com, yeah. right? And I can, I can manage these websites in my sleep, you know, and have, have all of these people do all of these great things on a platform. That's much more interesting to me. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you guys for joining. All right.